High Life is a science fiction horror film released back in 2018. High Life, like the latter two films, isn't exactly forthcoming about what it's up to, so you might need a little help understanding what's going on, and especially the ending. This is where we step in. Also, we'll discuss how you can beat High Life if you were ever thrown into the film. First up, what exactly is the movie about? Well, High Life follows a group of death row inmates who are sent uh, to space on a mission to extract alternative energy from a black hole. However, Dr. Dibbs, the main protagonist, uses each prisoner as a guinea pig in her experiments. She has a strong, almost consuming obsession with having a child through the means of artificial insemination, but she's yet to be successful in this venture. Therefore, sexual activity between inmates is forbidden. The ship they're traveling on to outer space is outfitted with the box, a truly disturbing device in a small room that the crew obsessively uses to masturbate into, obviously for the doctor's own gain. Adding to the already demented practices happening to the inmates, Dr. Dibbs gives the passengers sedatives to make them more easily comply to their orders. Now, the entire reason Dibs is on the ship is that she murdered her own children and husband before trying to commit suicide. She's trying to recreate her family, replacing the ones she selfishly took. When we're first introduced to the prisoners in the ship, Dibs's sexual advances are frequently rejected by Monty, the main character, and the only celibate prisoner. But who exactly is Monty? Well, Monty is serving a life sentence for murdering a childhood friend who subsequently killed his dog. Additionally, we're introduced to Tcherny, who happens to be Monty's only friend on the ship and is obsessed with the onboard garden, as it reminds of him home, back on Earth. This is important info for later on. The fates of the other crew members are revealed after we meet Monty. They all die in various ways relating to their doomed mission. Dibs euthanizes Chandra after he develops leukemia from radiation. Electra, another prisoner, gives birth to a stillborn child and dies as a result of complications. After attempting to sexually assault Mink and Boise, Etor is stabbed to death by Mink. Mink becomes enraged and attempts to murder Dibs, but Monty is forced to kill her first. As you can see, things on the ship and between those on board are far from good. In the meantime, Dibs begins doubling the amount of sedatives given to each prisoner before sneaking into Monty's cell and raping him while he's heavily sedated. She then injects his sperm into Boise, who gives birth to a healthy child whom Dibs seemingly adores. But Monty is unaware that he is, in fact, the child's father. Nansen prepares to pilot a shuttle around the black hole as the ship approaches it. Boise then kills Nansen with a shovel and takes her place, unknown to the other prisoners. The shuttle is then seen traveling through a molecular cloud, which alters its trajectory and causes it to fall into the black hole, where Boise explodes due to spaghettification, which is the stretching of objects into long, thin shapes in a very strong gravitational field. Mink later attacks and injures Dibs before being killed by Monty, before ejecting herself into space. Dibs informs Monty that the child is his. Tcherny commits suicide, and Monty buries him in the garden per his request. Monty, the ship's sole survivor, removes the bodies from the morgue, dresses them in spacesuits, and releases them into space. Now, once everyone's perished, Monty is having difficulty raising the baby, who he's named Willow. He tries to repair the ship, but her frantic cries over his helmet speakers cause him to drop a tool, subsequently losing it to space. When Willow's a teenager, they come across another ship that looks similar to theirs. Monty and Willow realize near the end of High Life that they are not the first crew sent on a deadly mission into the deepest parts of space. Their ship discovers a second identical one. When Monty boards it, he discovers that it's completely populated by stray dogs who have all eaten each other to death in order to survive. The few remaining dogs, like Monty and Willow, are victims of a twisted experiment, similar to theirs. And Monty's discovery has obvious implications for where he and Willow will end up, and it's not good. If things continue as they are for the father-daughter duo, Monty and Willow will end up like the dogs. Willow requests that her father bring one of the dogs back onto the ship for companionship, but Monty is concerned that this will contaminate them. While a stray dog could literally infect Monty and Willow, Monty is more concerned that if his daughter learns the truth about the very first ship sent on this mission, she might lose hope, or any hope that she might have remaining for the future. He withholds the truth in order to keep her safe. However, the discovery of the dog ship marks a watershed moment for Monty as a character. He realizes that no amount of hope is going to save him or his daughter. This sets the tone for their final decision. As Monty and Willow approach the black hole, Willow suggests piloting the ship's remaining shuttle into it. Monty agrees, but for very different reasons. It's a hopeful time for both of them. Despite her conception, Willow is the only innocent character in the story. She wasn't 
wasn't present during the brutality that led to her conception, nor did she see Boise fly into the black hole and become spaghettified. Flying through a black hole isn't necessarily a death sentence for her. It's an adventure into an unknown world. However, Monty knows better. He witnessed what happened to Boise, but he also realizes that he and Willow are out of options. So, he decides not to tell her what the black hole will do, instead allowing his daughter to believe in something good. Monty holds Willow's hand as they fly into the black hole, savoring his final moments with the only person that he loves. It's the ending to Cherney desired, but he couldn't have. High Life concludes with Monty and Willow being twisted into spaghetti. This opens the door to the possibility that they don't die in the traditional sense. Flying into a black hole appears to an outside observer to be spaghettification, and Monty and Willow, and Boise, might still exist in some form, in some kind of alternate reality. It's not likely, but it's about as hopeful as an ending as you can get in a film this bleak and disturbing. So, is there any way to beat High Life and come out alive? Well, simply put, no. As we discussed, they were sent on a death mission from the very beginning. Pattinson and director Claire Dennis discussed the film and its themes in an interview with No Film School, highlighting that there is no happy ending. The crew members of the ship were all former prisoners who were sold on the idea of escaping Earth to serve science. But really, the ship is just another prison. But this prison's different. It's seemingly impossible to escape without resulting in death. Monty, played by Pattinson, attempts to rebel against Dr. Dibbs' experiments by refusing to participate. He's the only member of the crew who remains celibate and avoids the masturbatory black box, which Dibbs uses to harvest the crew's genetic material and impregnate the crew's female members. However, as Pattinson stated in the interview, rebellion is futile. Dibbs simply drugs him, sexually assaults him, and conceives Willow with his sperm. This means that there's no real way to beat this lifestyle once you're entrusted into it. You have no rights. And and you can just be taken advantage of time and time again. We then see Dibbs commit suicide shortly after Willow is born, leaving Monty and Willow as the only two survivors on a ship that can't return to Earth. It's an impossible place to raise a child, especially one who's conceived without anybody's permission. And yet, when we first meet Monty, he's doing exactly that. It appears that Willow is the closest thing to hope that he has, in a situation that is basically 100% terminal. If you want to avoid high life, then you must never board the ship in the first place. And there you have it. Every Everything you need to know regarding the thriller, sci-fi film, High Life, and whether it's possible to beat it. Now, High Life has to be one of the most visually stunning sci-fi thriller films out there. The, the climax follows a minimalist take on the wonders of space that's both beautiful and terrifying. It's also one of the most striking and direct film metaphors for parenthood in the last decade. Being a father, Monty realizes is a black hole of uncertainty with no clear path to the other side, but the results can be truly wondrous if you can pull it off. This is a gripping yet disturbing film that really is a must watch.